What is up everyone? JD here. Hope everyone is doing well today. Today I'm excited to do a new knife review. Today we're going to be talking about a new knife from Gonzo and that is going to be the FB7601. As you know I have changed my format on the channel. I actually will include everything that comes in the box as part of the review. But you know, I am actually unboxing the knife, carrying it, handling it, doing some cutting with it to get my thoughts and impressions together. And then I can show you everything that comes with it. You get some warranty paper, you get some moisture wicking gel, you get the sock, the bubble wrap, inside of a really well packaged little box here from Gonzo. And here you can see, whoops, upside down, the label on this. This is the model FB7601 in black, made in China. And we'll go ahead and run through the specs. Then we'll do the comparison knives, talk about the knife itself, and then I'll give you some alternative options in case you're interested. So the Gonzo FB7601 has a 3.4 inch 440C blade steel, 4.67 inch G10 handles, overall length is 8.07 inches, and I could not find a weight, so we're just gonna bring the scale on out here and do a weight. Let's see here, I'm guessing around five ounces. 4.3 ounces, not bad. I actually thought it was gonna be a little bit heavier. So we'll go ahead and move into comparison knives. The comparison knives are going to be brought out in hopes that it'll help you with the size and get an idea for a size reference. Then we'll talk about the knife. So first up is going to be the Spider Coat Yojimbo 2, which also does a good job representing the Para 3. It's very close in size and carry profile. Next, we'll go ahead and bring out the Spyderco Shaman. And as you can see, this is actually closer. This is actually, I think, kind of in between. I'm trying to gauge it under the camera. I think it's a touch longer. Yeah, 8.07, that would make sense. It's a touch longer and it is just a hair shorter. So this would actually be closer to a full-size folder. Very interesting to see it against those knives. I hadn't, I don't do the comparison, so I do have a little bit of element of surprise when I come to do this review with you all. All right, next up, we're gonna bring out the Benchmade Bug Out, and I'm going to bring out, actually, let me do it from the hilt, the Civivi Conspirator. I still don't have my replacement for the SIG in yet, but I, I did finally pick it up because they came in stock and it is on the way. As you can see here, the FB7601 is actually longer than both the Bug Out and the Conspirator. So again, a full-size offering from Gonzo here. Let me get these out of the way. And last but not least, we'll bring out the budget knives. First is gonna be the Kubi Royal, the KU321. As you can see, it's just much shorter and the Buck 110 Slim. This one here is going to still be longer, but the Gonzo is gonna have more presence, more carry presence, more ergo presence than the Buck is itself. All right, that is, should help everyone with the size reference and give you a good idea of the size of this knife. As you can tell, it is a full size knife. So let me go ahead and jump into it. Now, what I do like about the knife is it does seem like the 440C has a really well done heat treat it came with a nice factory edge on it that slices and performs really well it does have a satin finish which is a bit of a fingerprint magnet as is any satin finish this isn't gonzo specifically this is any knife that comes out with them it doesn't have the best sharpening choil i think you could probably add one though with the length of this blade if this you know, if this is gonna be your primary knife and if you're gonna use it to the point where you're gonna dull it down and need to sharpen it, it actually came from the factory with a smile. Let me see if I can get that in there. You see the smile there? Started already. Um, and you can see this uh, plunge grind actually dropping right down to it. So that's a little bit of a disappointment that it came from the factory starting with a little bit of a smile already but you could easily just take a Dremel and add in your own little sharpening tool right there and be good to go. The knife itself is a little bit thick. Um, it definitely feels like a harder use knife. It feels like it's meant for more heavy duty than it is EDC slicing type activities, which is not necessarily a bad thing because it is a bigger knife and it is probably meant to do that. 
It does have a swedge out towards the, towards the tip. The grind looks pretty even, but you know, I'm going based off the naked eye. I'm definitely not putting that up against anything. It They did move the um, branding up a little bit and dulled down the color a little bit on this one. At least that's what it looks like. And then they did take the FB knife and made by Gonzo all written. <laughs> I don't know why they have to have all that branding on there, but it is what it is. What can I say? I mean, this knife, if I haven't mentioned it, is $20. So I'm I'm not trying to be super nitpicky, but at the same time, I am going to kind of point out what I do and what I don't like, irregardless of the knife's price point. I'm not going to show any special favors, uh, whether it be a $500 knife or whether it be a $20 knife. That's just how I've decided to do my format. The Ergos are actually pretty comfortable i like the fact that it's sitting on steel liners they are oops there we go they are milled out so that you can see they did try to reduce that weight to get it down to whatever i said 4.6 4.5 i don't even remember already um this pocket clip is pretty springy and pretty lightweight i worry about it coming out of the pocket a little bit too easy it is super super light and it is very deep carry this is going to go way down in the pocket i know it's angled but what you're gonna do is you're gonna end up hitting this piece here first and you're gonna end up sitting right about there. So you're not gonna have too much left hanging out when you're done. They didn't make it reversible, which I thought was interesting. I guess that maybe saves some money. The other thing too, I'm not quite sure, but I think you're gonna have to take it apart from this side and then you're gonna have to loosen the bolts and take it out <laughs> from, so I mean, I guess that's why they didn't make it reversible because it would be a, um, it would be a chore to get to that point. The action on this deployment is good, but I'm still seeing that Gonzo has like a really hard stop point. If you don't pull the um, crossbar lock or the G lock or whatever this one's called all the way back, it actually will not drop shut. And it's these things are so flush to the scales that it's actually really hard to get to them. I wish they could have chamfered them down it would have made it operate a little bit more nicely. And again, the way these are bullnosed, they are not comfortable to operate. Can you get them all the way down? Yes. Oh, I'm really trying there, actually. You can, but you got to pull it way down. And it's still kind of gritty. I didn't bring my toolkit out. I wish I would have because I thought about trying to loose it because it is very solid and lock up. It feels like it could have actually been a little bit over tightened from the factory. But they might have done that thinking it was going to break in. It is nylon with stainless steel bearings in the pivot. That's how they get you that action. Thumb studs are okay as well. I like these definitely better than I like the uh, crossbar lock studs. And then I think it's T8 with T6 hardware screws all throughout. But again, I think if you're spending $20 on this knife, you're probably not going to worry too much about the maintenance on it. I mean, if you're only spending $20 on a knife, um, my thought is that you really don't care about that. And that will lead me into the next thing, which is going to be alternate recommendations. If you're spending $20 on a knife and you really don't care about it, spend eight to ten dollars more and get you one that's made in the usa it has a hollow grind 420c it does have a stone washed finish so they at least did that um, and it's probably going to be a little bit stronger than the pivot with stainless steel bearings and you're going to be using a product that's less susceptible to dirt and debris because there's really nowhere that this is going to go and if you you know again twenty dollars you don't really care about the maintenance on the knife or what happens to it you can get yourself a buck and support a usa made company that is going to give you the exact same ca uh, cutting capabilities and thought and mindset of hey you know i'm just this is just my beater knife and I really don't care about it. And in all honesty, you're probably going to enjoy the thumb studs and the action on this a little bit better than you are on this Gonzo. And I know there's a lot of people out there that likes that like Gonzos, but I can't really hold back or pull back any punches because I just think it's very underwhelming. And it is. It is twenty dollars but I'm not letting that deter me from giving an honest review. It's just not for me. I would honestly, if, you, if your mindset is you just want a cutting tool and you don't care, 
I would get the buck. If you want something because you think it's cool and it has a slight fidget factor, but you also don't care about anything happening to it, this one right here, still my budget champ. I think it's less than 30 bucks. It has superior ergos. It has a superior grind to it. It is much thinner. It has a superior sharpening choil, superior thumb studs. It does give you more access to those bull nose access locks, but they start, they both are about the same as far as operating, but the springs on here are a little bit lighter and the action is a way smoother, way, way smoother. I mean, Hang on one second, let me grab my tools and I'm gonna see if I can loosen that pivot and see if I can even force it to have better action. All right, got the tool case. Let's jump in here real quick. See if we can loosen this pivot up any real quick. This is the one I keep in my backpack. It was actually a little bit closer than going all the way to the one that I keep on the bench in the house or not in the bench, but in the toolbox in the house. All right, let's see. So it is definitely T8. Oh God, just moving it back a hair. I don't think I need to worry about this side. Yeah, so let's see. It did help a little bit. Uh, did it loosen it any though? No, it's still tight. Maybe I can come out just a touch more. I hate to do it too much. Still tight. Oh, that did help a little bit. It did help a little bit. You see, it, you can tell it helped a little bit. It's starting to want to drop. <laughs> Whereas this one is just, it's just smoother overall. This one has come loose a little bit though. Ooh, I think I tightened it too much. Nope. Nope, <laughs> tighten it right up and it's still smoother. I would say if you want desperately to have the crossbar lock, I like the Free Tiger more than I like the Gonzo P, I'm sorry, FB7601. I don't know why I keep saying P. Um, one that I keep forgetting about to mention when I do these, I'm gonna bring this down a little bit. I just realized you guys can get a better look at them if I drop it down a little bit more. Um, one that I always forget to mention, it is actually the Parrot from QSP, which comes with D2 steel and micarta handles. It is a liner lock, but it is also a $28 knife. So that is another option. And I always throw this out there because you are talking about a $20 knife, but when you're talking about getting to that close to $30 price point, I really do like this Reich. You get a stainless steel frame lock that is a decent weight. It is a thin EDC knife and you get 14C 28N blade steel. I'm trying to get it to show up there. There you go. 14C 28N blade steel and it's just a really killer deal for the money if that's all you really care about. But again, I think if you're spending $20 on a knife, it I have to wonder if the intent is just uh, it's kind of cool. It's got a crossbar lock and I really don't care about how I use this and how I treat this That's why I offered the free tiger um, I do really like that one a lot. Gosh, I can't think of the name of it the free tiger FT 2103 thank God they put it on the blade. I complained about the branding, but it just saved me there um, I would this would be a pass for me if you're going to spend the $20, I seriously would recommend either getting the buck with the 420 because it has the hollow grind. It's going to be more slicey. And um, I just don't like the fact that they didn't chamfer down around this crossbar lock. I think it's really tough. And if you have to have a crossbar lock and you're just absolutely unwilling to spend more than 30 or you want to throw it in your truck or your car or in your bug out bag, um, and kind of leave it and forget about it or if you just want to take it to the job site and beat up on it that free tiger is definitely to me um, It's better and that's the same because I really think they did a pretty good job with the edge outside of you know The sharpening choil will be a little disappointment um, And the ergos with the stainless steel liner pretty good, but the pocket hips kind of meh 
you know, for twenty dollars even, I think <laughs> I can't believe I'm saying that, but I think you can spend your money elsewhere on something better. That's crazy to me to even think that I'm saying that. But anyway, uh, if you enjoyed today's review, I'm just kind of going on now at this point. Do me a favor, leave a like. If you're not subscribed, consider subscribing. Hopefully you're not too mad at me if you're a Gonzo fan. Just the two knives that I've picked to review that were interesting to me have been kind of disappointing. Um, leave a like and <laughs> just watch my other content. Thanks for tuning in today, guys. I really appreciate all the support. You are awesome. I hope all of you have a fantastic week. Until next time, peace.